James, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I am one. Scream is one of my favorite franchises, so I, I was so excited to see this movie. I've seen it. I love it so much. How are you feeling so far? Um, it, at the time we're recording, it's coming out tomorrow, but the response so far has been great. It's been amazing just to sort of see uh, people start to see it and start to respond to it and start to really like it, which is wonderful. And I think also just... You know, we lived with the sort of the secrets of the movie for so long that every time we've talked about it, we've had to be careful. So finally being able to talk a little bit more broadly about what happens in the movie has been really exciting. That's the most exciting part about the Scream movies is unmasking the killer, finding out who the killer is. And previous movies have kind of infamously either scrapped endings and rewritten them because they've been found out or had fake endings that they've kind of leaked into the universe. Did you play with doing that? Did you do a bunch of alternate endings? Did you write fake endings just in case that script got out? We did. We actually, you know, we sort of felt like it was part of the the fun of making a Scream movie is, is writing fake endings and doing that. It's sort of to honor, it's what Kevin did and we wanted to honor Kevin and, 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 and Wes. And so we actually gave a lot of the actors different endings than is actually in the movie. We gave certain people in post-production of the studio different endings. So Guy Busick, my co-writer and I, wrote a bunch of different fake endings. And then when it came to production, um, we were shooting in COVID, so it, we didn't really have a lot of extra time. Not that you ever do on a movie, but we the, the ending we shot is the only ending we shot. But the cast, up until the last couple weeks of production, some of them didn't know whether they were the killer or not and would play guessing games about it, which I thought was really fun. Oh, that's really interesting. I, uh, I, I love that. Um, I have to imagine you've tackled a lot of, of popular IP, but where does Scream rank on term in terms of just like the pressure of writing it? Because it is a Scream movie, you know, without Wes, but it I it's fantastic. But what where where did the idea start for you or the question that kicked off the Scream script for you? It really sort of began with I um and my partners William Sherrick and Paul Neinstein founded this company Project X about two and a half years ago. And we had had some conversation with Gary Barber, who basically owned Scream and knew he wanted to make another one. And he sort of said, look, you know, uh, would you guys be interested in doing it? And would you, Jamie, be interested in writing it? And Scream for me has always been this amazing sort of touchstone of a film that I saw when I was in college and completely blew me away. And it was at the time when I wanted to be a screenwriter, to see a screenplay like Kevin had written, be so confident and so amazing and be able to do so many different things at the same time and sort of have its cake and eat it too in terms of deconstructing a genre, but also being one of the best versions of a genre. So the idea of making one was incredibly exciting. But it was also this incredible opportunity um, that we got to build it completely from the ground up. There were no parameters from Spyglass. They just sort of said, here's the, what would you do with it? Here's the title. And the first thing you know we did is, and I said is, we have to call Kevin Williamson and we have to get him involved because I, I didn't want us to do anything without him being with us every step of the way and getting his blessing and getting his sort of writer brain on too what would work and, and what, you know, what wouldn't work. And we were lucky enough that Kevin came on board and then Guy Busick, who I'd known for 20 years, who I uh, produced a movie that he uh, had co-written called Ready or Not, I knew had the exact sort of fantastic, I mean, one of my favorite experiences was making that movie with Guy and Radio Silence, who I then was like, we want to bring those guys in to direct it because we knew that I didn't want to trust anyone I hadn't worked with before with material as this. It was so sort of precious to us. Um, and we really sort of got to build it from the ground up. Um, and that was one of the most exciting things in my career. I've been able to do, I've been lucky enough to be able to work with a lot of different people and in a lot of different genres, but this one is incredibly special to me. I don't even know if you want to say at this point or if you can say, but it, it feels like Woodsboro is going to be always a place that fans want to return to. Are you thinking about multiple Scream films in kind of this n new era, if we want to call it that? Or do you feel like this is a, a one and done type thing? The way we approached it, and I've I've had this experience before in my career where I worked on movies before where people go, oh, it would be so exciting to plan out two and three and we'll see, you know, plant this. And then and then the movie comes out and there is no sequel because it didn't it didn't work. And so coming into this, we really looked at it as if we got to make one screen film, what would we put? If we only got one shot at it, we wanted to do everything we could in here and put it in here and make sure that like Wes's films, it's a full meal from beginning to end. Um, 
if the opportunity came along to make more, I think all of us would jump at the chance. This has just been an incredibly exciting experience and a wonderful experience. It really has been getting to make a movie with your friends, which is not almost ever the case. Um, but we really did want this movie to stand on its own. We really wanted to give every, we didn't want to make a trailer for Scream, the two hour trailer for Scream 6. We wanted to, to sort of take you on the journey, take you on the ride, reintroduce you to the people you love, have you meet some new characters along the way and really enjoy going back to Woodsboro. How much time do you spend thinking about the stab movies? Because <laughs> there is some stuff in the trailer that I don't think we quite saw that I think is from maybe stab or something. I, I was trying to figure this out. There is some, and I don't think it's a spoiler. There are some, there is some footage from uh, a new stab movie in this particular movie that is in the trailer. So I, I mean, always sort of love the idea of starting in Scream 2, that there is this sort of franchise going along sort of in universe that can mm -hmm. also sort of, you know, make fun of and, and poke fun at what sort of is going on in horror. And, and you know, it, it just, it's such a wonderfully Kevin Williamson meta thing where, you know, he wrote a throwaway line about Tori Spelling would star, you know, would star in the remake in the first movie and then getting Tori Spelling to play that character in the second movie. So it, it always, it felt very proper to check in on the Stab franchise and where they are today. Definitely. And I can tell that you are a massive Scream fan because, and, I, and I'll say this to people watching, is to pay really close attention to things like names and last names and things that are, people are saying. Uh, what can you just tease about all of that? I, and I have a question for you after this. Sure. No, I mean, I think that, that you know, we, there are, Going back to, you know, the fact that, you know, Billy Loomis, Loomis from Halloween, you know, there's always been sort of a naming scheme. And so, um, you know, one of our newer characters is named Sam Carpenter, Carpenter for John Carpenter. Uh, there's a character named Wes in the film after the wonderful late Wes Craven. And so there's always, I think, a playfulness to, to sort of creating those characters and naming them that way. Yeah, and so uh, Sonia's last name is Mackenzie, and in the first one, yep. they tell Mackenzie's them to go the across the street to the Mackenzie. Yep. Okay, my question is um, it, minor thing, but we see Sydney pushing a stroller. We see her wearing a ring. She's married. Is she mm -hmm. married to Kincaid? <laughs> Do you know? I don't want to answer a question like that, but I think that is up to your interpretation. I think we didn't choose the name randomly, but um, you know, it's uh, it's up to, it's up to you. Okay. Okay. Um, I also want to ask you about another thing that is uh, very popular right now. You also wrote a little movie called The Amazing Spider-Man. Have you seen No Way Home? Yes. <laughs> You've seen it. So, did, I mean, yes, how much I, did you know in advance? Where, when did you find out that Andrew and Toby were going to be involved? No, I, I had no, nobody told me. It was, it was one of those things where you know, the rumors were kind of going around and in my head, and I didn't reach out. I didn't reach out to Amy. I just sort of didn't want to, you know, um, but I always sort of went, I, I went, oh man, if they, if they pull that off, it would be incredible. And I, I'd also wrote a version of Spider-Man four, uh, with, uh, with Toby and Sam before they moved on. So weirdly I'd written Spider-Man for Toby and for Andrew. So it was, so, and I love what, what Tom has done with it and what they've done within the MCU. So it was just so fun to sort of see that. And it's wonderful to see. I always sort of said the best thing we ever did was cast Andrew because I just think he's such a phenomenal actor. And so to see him getting the love right now and the accolades is just really special. Yeah, it's been incredible. And there's also this big kind of fandom push slash maybe a studio push to have Andrew back. Uh, unclear at the moment, but what do you think of that possibility? And are you interested in in working with him in that capacity again? Oh, I mean, listen, I just as a fan would love to see him play the role more just because I think he's so wonderful. And I would never say no to, to working with an actor like that. At the same time, I think you know, what they've built there. And, and I, listen, I know Amy Pascal, you know, I've known forever and she's had such a, done such a great job producing those movies. I would always say yes to, to, to working with my friends again, but I also think uh, they've done such a phenomenal job and they have it so well in hand. And I'm just, I'm just excited to be a fan and see what they do next. Quick question, just circling back to the Spider-Man 4 of it all, how far were you in that process like it was fully written ready to go yeah so spider-man 4 was we had we had a full script sort of ready to go 
Um, and as is the, as is sort of the case when you're, you know, a working feature writer and stuff like that, they brought in some other great writers to punch it up. They changed some things. Um, and I think about a year later, they sort of got to a point where, and I don't know why, but, but they got to a point where they decided that wasn't the, the road they were going to go down. They were going to sort of reboot it. And at the same time, I'd been talking to Amy about sort of what to do next. And she said, I think there's a possibility of us, you know, taking Peter Parker back to high school. Would that be something you were interested in? And we kind of came out with a story, but it was wonderful to work with, you know, with Sam Raimi, who's one of my heroes and, and Tobey Maguire, who was so great in the role. And then it was sort of, it was very odd because I, I, I came in with the idea of ending one franchise and then ended up sort of starting another one, which was a, which was a, which was an interesting, an interesting journey for me. Did you cry when you saw like the portal open and then you're like, I think that's, by Spider-Man. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't cry, but it was definitely so exciting. It was just such a wonderfully, and I think the film is is so wonderfully emotional, and I think that's what's so great about it. Um, I cried the I whole time. Did incredible. <laughs> it just, he did a great job. I want to get a couple other updates from you because um, another movie that I love that I think is such a gem was Murder Mystery. And oh, thank you. I loved it. And so you're doing Murder Mystery 2, right? That's like filming, I think? We are. Literally, the reason I'm in a hotel room is we're we're on day four, I think. And I've just come back from there. But yeah. Um, oh, my gosh. So Murder Mystery 2 is filming. How is it? I love it. Ugh. I mean, I'm biased, but really good. I, <laughs> you know, I was, I was, you know, Adam and Jen are incredible and they just have such great chemistry and it's so much fun to be able to make a movie like that. A lot of the things I've done have been more serious and, and, um, or actiony or, or what have you. And so just a pure fun comedy like that was something I was really excited to do and really excited to, I've been married for 16 years now. And I, when I wrote the first one and this one, it was really sort of a love letter to my wife and a love letter to, I sort of feel like you always see romantic stories are always about a couple meeting for the first time or about a couple about to break up. And, you know, at the end, so you always see the beginning and the end of a relationship. You never see the middle with a couple that really loves each other. And that was sort of the, behind all of the jokes and the wackiness and stuff like that, the, the idea for Murder Mystery that I had. And so I love that, you know, we got to make that movie and that people responded to it and that we get to do it again. I'm so glad there's another one. I thought it was so fun. Oh, um, cool. Now give me the give me the Transformers update. I was trying to figure this out because it was like, okay, there's dual Transformers scripts. What what are you doing? What's happening? Are you doing Rise of the Beasts? So, no. So I I I had written a, uh, uh, I, had, I I knew Lorenzo de Bonaventura, who's the producer of those of those movies, who's wonderful and a friend. And he we were working on something else, and he came to me, and he said, if you were going to do a Transformers movie, what what would you do? And I kind of pitched him this take. And he said, oh, that sounds really cool. And he said, and so they hired me to write it. And he said, look, just so you know, we're also uh, hiring a guy named Joby Harold, who's a wonderful writer, to write a completely different take. Um, and I said, great. You know, the more that I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm pro writer. So, and ultimately it came down to, they decided the Joby's was the next movie they wanted to make. And I read it and he did a phenomenal job and they're shooting it. And I've spoken to the director, Steven, a little bit and Lorenzo, just cause I'm, I'm friends with them and a fan. And, and I think it's super cool, but they get yeah, rise of the beast is going to be really fun. I think, but it is not my, uh, it is not the transformers that I wrote. Got it. Okay. Cause you know, IMDB, it like lies constantly. And I'm like, well, it has <laughs> Not but always. I'm talking to the person, and I can ask about that. <laughs> um, so you, you've tackled some great IP between Spider-Man, Scream, you know, Transformers. Is there anything you would love to to tackle that you feel like you you have an idea in mind for a next chapter, a refresh, a revival? Anything you would love to tackle? I think there's always sort of stuff out there. There are one or two. I also sort of don't always want to jinx it and put it out in the world and you know the other thing that is sort of really important to me as a writer and a producer um is supporting sort of original stories and voices and stuff that's non ip i mean you know the thing about ip it's great but you have to continue to make new ip you know you can't just kind of do the old things so that's why we made ready or not which i'm super incredibly proud of that's why we're making the next Michael Bay movie, this thing called Ambulance, which Chris Fedak wrote, which is based on a, a Danish heist film. You know, that's why we're making this movie Bed Rest, um, which is written and directed by Laurie Evans Taylor, who's a first time uh, writer director. And, and sort of, so I'm actually incredibly passionate about all of the stuff I grew up with and I love and that we all love, but also telling new stories and, and sort of breaking new ground. Cause I think that's how, you know, that's how we'll get the screams of tomorrow is by, you know, letting, you know, really cool filmmakers and really great writers take shots with new material. 
And not to completely go against everything you just said, but I love no. Ready or Not <laughs> so much that I watched it and I'm thinking there's no sequel for that. That's a one and done movie. But it would a prequel or something like that be something that you would want to explore? I love that universe. And I think I that, that so much. <laughs> what oh, I mean, I do too. And 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 Guy and Ryan who wrote it have been Ryan and I went to college together. I met him through Guy through him. We've been friends for 20 years. We all had such a blast making that movie. It was a tough movie to make and get made, and Fox Searchlight really stood behind it, which was wonderful. But it is such a very specific tone, and a lot of times with stuff that's like horror comedy, you really have to convince people that you can ride that line and that it's going to work. And so I feel like the movie was successful in in doing that and people really love it. It would be great to to revisit that universe again. That would that would be super fun for me. Plus I actually play the devil in it. So for 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 me personally, um I would be very excited to do it again. I love how word of mouth that like I would bring that copy to work and then be like, you have to borrow this and then let me know what you think. And then oh, it, cool. I feel like it's like spread around like the ring videotape. <laughs> oh, I love that. Thank you so much for doing that. That's so great. I loved it. Uh, is there anything else that you would like to touch on that I did not mention? I'm trying to think. I just sort of the the you know, the, the things that I'm sort of really excited about coming up is is. Um, you know, I started out, I, I, you know, I'm a writer, but I began producing as a, as a way to literally just start to not get fired from feature films. Cause usually when you're a feature film writer, you know, there's a lot of turnover. And I sort of figured if I was a producer, they'd be less likely to fire me because they knew I was still going to be there on Monday. And then I ended up really enjoying it. And we started this company project X. And so we have scream coming out. Now we have Michael Bay's next movie ambulance coming out in April, which is amazing with Jake Gyllenhaal and Yaya. We have bed rest with Melissa Barrera from scream coming out in July. And we're starting uh, a TV series for Netflix called the night agent created by the great Sean Ryan, who created the shield. So we're just super excited about having a, a wide sort of variety of fun stuff uh, coming out. 